Hello everybody. I want to make this um, a regular gig. So hello to everybody who jumps on or who watches the replay of this. I've been promising that I will be doing more of these lives but unfortunately life gets chaotic and I get a bit disorganised. So what I've decided I want to do is at midday every Monday um, and I will probably introduce other times, I'm going to do a session called Let's Talk. So today what I'm going to do is start with talking about cleansing which is really, really important. So um, when we talk about cleansing, I'm not just talking about, hi Michelle, I'm not just talking about uh, cleansing your face although I will go into that a little bit more than everything else because that's my specialty. Um, but when we look at our whole body, I treat it like it's my temple and there is a, a lot of other girls who are into yoga and meditation and all those beautiful things will definitely agree and say that your body is your temple. It's your home and it's the, the only one you get so it's really important to look after it. And our skin is the same. Our skin, we only get one set of skin and it's um, not really possible to replace it. I know they're doing some skin grafting and skin transplants these days but really um, you only get one set of skin and you really need to look after it. So. I'm going to give you five tips today on how to take care of your skin by cleansing. So obviously we cleanse our hair, we cleanse our bodies, we cleanse our face. Uh, well hopefully you do because it's really, really important to be cleansing your face and generally cleansing it with something different to what you're cleansing your body with because um, an old saying actually that I, I used to go by was that the skin on your body is like cardboard, the skin on your face is like paper and the skin around your eyes is like tissue paper. So that skin is much more fragile and this skin than what you've got on the rest of your body. So you have to treat them differently. Hi Kate, how are you going? Um, so like I was saying, we cleanse all of the outside of our body, uh, but it's also really important to cleanse the inside of your body, which is something that I'm doing at the moment. I'm actually doing a big six week cleanse, which as you can imagine is really fun. Um, I'm doing that with a friend of mine and a cleansing specialist by the name of Rebecca. So um, what I will say is that if you're having any issues with your skin, so if you're having um, or suffering with eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, hi Lindsay, any of those skin um, conditions, usually your skin is an expression of what's going on on the inside. So my recommendation or my advice to you if you're having any conditions with your skin or any problems with your skin is to stop and think what's going on inside. What am I putting in my body or what is emotionally going on in my life because that will usually come out in your skin. Now I'm not an expert on gut health by any means but there is a big correlation now between gut health and brain health but also gut health and the skin. Like, like I said the expression of what's going on on the inside comes out in your skin. So if your gut and your bowel and all that sort of thing are not happy then you'll often find you'll have more breakouts um, or any of those other conditions I mentioned, eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, those sorts of things. So really important, number one, to be cleansing regularly what's on the inside of your body so that your skin can be nice and healthy and glowing um, on the outside. So um, my specialty is obviously the outside which is skin so I wanted to focus more on that today but I did want to mention how important it is what you're doing on the inside. So it's really important like I said to be cleansing your face and cleansing the outside of your body and when you're doing that as you all know my passion is teaching you all how to choose much safer um, cosmetics and products to be using on your body because it's a really toxic world out there what's actually going into cosmetics. Um, a lot of them are skin irritants, uh, endocrine disruptors, hormone disruptors and unfortunately a lot of them are also now being related to cancer or carcinogenic ingredients go into our cosmetics. So if you're putting those products on your body every single day, as you can imagine, they build up in your system and eventually your body just says, I'm done, I can't put up with all of this going in or on my body anymore and you'll have some sort of problem. So um, with myself it was um, fibromyalgia which is an autoimmune disorder. So my body had gone into toxic overload from putting too many things on and in my body that my body couldn't cope with anymore. So I started to crash and burn and suffer with um, chronic fatigue type symptoms and chronic pain and thank goodness I can actually say what month are we in? October. I've had 10 months pain free this year so that's pretty big for me to be able to say that and it all comes down to taking a whole life, whole body approach to what you're putting in and on your body but not only that, what you're surrounding yourself with. So 
my talk today wasn't even going to incorporate cleaning your house and what you clean your clothes and your sheets and your towels and all of that with but really important to be mindful of what you're using for those as well because unfortunately a lot of the cleaning products out there in the world are quite toxic and if your home is full of those toxins then your body is actually absorbing them because as you may have heard me say before um, your skin actually absorbs what's put on it within 26 seconds and it's the same with what we're breathing in and if you're washing your shower for instance now I'm going totally off track as usual if you're washing your shower, for instance, with um, really harsh chemicals, that residue actually stays on the shower walls. And then when you get in and make a nice hot shower and it creates steam, those chemicals actually come off the walls of your shower and fill that nice little cubicle that you're showering in every day with chemicals that are then being absorbed into your skin and you are breathing in as well. So getting totally off topic, but be really, really mindful of what you are cleansing everything in your home with and everything that comes in contact with your skin as well. So, of course, what I wanted to talk to you about was cleansing your face. So it's really important to choose soft, non-stripping cleansers. And I would always say that you need to cleanse twice a day, so morning and night. Um, if your cleanser is leaving your skin feeling super dry and tight when you finish cleansing or when you get out of the shower, I would say that that's usually a pretty good indication that your cleanser contains something called sodium lauryl sulfate or there's a, a slightly milder version called sodium lauryl sulfate. Um, but essentially what they are is foaming agents. So they're actually detergents. They're used in all your cleaning products. Um, and I was just reading an article before and if anybody would like to have access to some of these articles, I can send you the link or you can go and Google it yourself. But apparently the last official study that was done on sodium lauryl sulfate was done in 1983, which is a really long time ago. I think it's about time they updated that. Um, but it basically said that um, sodium lauryl sulfate was safe to use on the skin if it contained less than 1% of the ingredient in your cosmetic product, product and if it was washed off immediately. So to me that's um, a little bit dubious because we don't actually know what the percentage of it is that's going into our products and you're not always washing it off immediately and there's still always going to be residue of that left on your skin. But um, like I was saying, it's a foaming agent, so it's a detergent. It's actually designed to strip um, and it will leave your skin really dry and therefore leave your skin quite sensitive too to anything else that you put on the surface. Um, so apparently a, a more recent study well, it was um, an independent study done in 2015. So go and Google these things if you want to um, find out more about sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate. And you can actually get your um, shampoos, anything that's a cleanser, anything that's shampoo, uh, body wash, cleanser, detergent for your washing sink. Um, you know, you've got a bit of hair stuck on my nose. Sorry, it's bothering me. Um, it will probably contain in one of the first ingredients the um, ingredient sodium laurel or sodium lauryl sulfate. Now, when I just mentioned that 1%, it's interesting because usually on the ingredients label, the first couple of ingredients are the most highly concentrated. So I would really be questioning how much is going into your products. So that's my second tip. Be really, really mindful of the cleansing or foaming agent that's going into your cleansing products. So sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate, um, probably best to get rid of them or not use them on your skin. Apparently they make great household cleansers, but I would still suggest using gloves when you're using them with cleansing. So the biggest thing that they have been proven to be is a skin irritant. So if you find that your skin, like I said, is dry or if it's red or if it's itchy or any of those sorts of um, symptoms, you probably don't want to be using sodium lauryl sulfate because it's obviously irritating your skin. Um, now number three, I wanted to say was if you are wearing makeup especially, it's really important to cleanse twice. So every day you should cleanse morning and night. Uh, cleanse in the morning to remove any, um, oh, what's the word? I've totally lost the word. Anyway, anything that builds up on your skin overnight um, and your night cream, you essentially want to be removing in the morning before you start your day fresh. And then at night time before you go to bed, you want to be cleansing your face of all the gunk and muck that's come on it during the day while you've been out and about in the world. Um, but if you are wearing makeup, really important to cleanse twice. Why? The first time is to actually remove the makeup and the second cleanse is to clean your skin. So that's my tip number three. So cleansing morning and night 
but twice if you've got makeup on. They actually say that if you go to bed without cleansing your makeup off, you will age seven days. So every time we've all got really, really drunk or something and I'm too tired, I'm not going to cleanse my makeup off, think about that because you're aging seven days by not taking your makeup off. So really important to be cleansing. Now, number four of my, uh, well, it's not really a tip so much, but um, you'll usually find that cleansers come in um, mainly one of three categories. So you'll have a foaming cleanser, uh, a milky or a cream cleanser and the other options now we're seeing more of is oil cleansers and I know a lot of people use things like coconut oil which is a nice op nice option too if you don't want to be buying products. Um, typically I would say a foaming cleanser is more designed for a younger skin um, because it can be more drying, um, more stripping um, and younger people tend to like that feeling because they don't like that oily feeling on the surface of their skin, especially if they're teenagers and they've got an overactive oil production. Um, as we mature, like myself, you probably want to be looking more at a milky or a clean, uh, cream cleanser because they're more gentle on your skin, they're less dragging, so therefore they'll create less wrinkles, hopefully, and um, they're also more hydrating. So you don't really want to be stripping your skin and drying it out and sucking all that good oil out once you get to you know my age about 40 so probably even a little bit younger you want to start looking at using a milky or a cream cleanser um, and then there are oil cleansers like I said we have a fabulous one with the company that I'm with if you suffer with really dry dermatitis -y, eczema -y type skins um, the oil cleanser is fantastic as well so reach out to me if you've got any questions about those sorts of things but yeah, generally a foaming cleanser is for a younger skin, but the other option you can do, uh, or the other thing you can do, is you can actually use your foaming cleanser to remove your makeup, and then you can use your milky cleanser to cleanse your skin before you go putting your moisturiser on, which I'll talk about in another session. Um, but that is an option too if you've got a foaming and a milky cleanser, use them like that. Or if you do have an overactive oil production, then um, you can definitely use the foaming cleanser. Um, so we want to keep our skin hydrated and looking younger and plump and fresh because if it's more plump then you will get less wrinkles, which is great because <laughs> nobody wants that or them. Um, of course we're all going to get them but we want to age a bit gracefully as well. So Now my tip number five, which is really, really important as well and a lot of people probably don't think so much about this, but it's really important to be cleansing your makeup brushes, makeup sponges and anything that you apply your makeup with on a regular basis because especially your sponges and your brushes, they are perfect little breeding grounds for bacteria to get in and multiply, breed basically. So especially if it's a nice warm moist environment, those little bacteria can go crazy in there and then you keep applying that to your skin every day and you can find that that can cause skin irritation as well. So really, really important on a regular basis to be cleansing anything that you put on your skin, any applicators, brushes, sponges and all you need to do for that in my new infection control policies and guidelines that I've been studying with my makeup artistry course, yeah, it's been really, really super exciting. <laughs> I can't wait to get into the nitty gritty of it. But it basically says all you need to do is use warm soapy water to wash your makeup brushes and applicators. So um, ideally you want to be using a good quality soap or you can actually use your cleanser as well. So I'd just get a, um, you know, a bowl with some warm water and put a little bit of your cleanser in and you can just swish those brushes and sponges and things around and then leave them out to dry somewhere um, you know, nice and warm and not moist. So um, air drying is really all that's required so and the other thing is not to store them in contaminated areas where other yucky germs and stuff are found so they're all my five tips for today so just recapping on them really important to cleanse and nourish the inside of your body so putting good healthy um, food in and cleansing regularly and hydration as well so really important to be drinking lots of waters and herbal teas and things like that um, secondly was to choose good, soft, non-stripping cleansers that don't contain sodium lauryl sulfates, or they often say SLS. So a lot, I know there's a lot available on the market now, no SLSs. Um, of course, if you need any help with these, then I'm more than willing to help you all. Um, thirdly, if you're wearing makeup, two cleansers and foaming cleansers, tip number four, foaming cleansers generally for a younger skin as we get more mature, milky or cream cleansers. 
And tip number five was to make sure you're cleansing your makeup brushes, sponges and applicators. So I hope you all got something out of that today and I look forward to joining you all again next week at the same time, if not beforehand. If you've got any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to help. Okay, have a great day. Bye.